Hello and welcome back to the Sterling Engine Mark IV videos. So in the last video I managed to actually just about get the engine running. It wasn't running that quickly, um, but it did run, so it's one good thing. I've made a few updates uh, since that point um, to the engine. I'll just show those now. So on the piston assemblies I was finding that the rubber was actually bulging right there when we turned it around. So just as a, um, a get you around, I've made these these rings that, that bolt on there. So when, when you turn the engine over, I'll try and do it on my foot. <laughs> they actually support, they actually, I'm this really good. There we go. They actually support, the nylon support the rings. You can see that. So that, that's that. The other thing you might notice is I've um, I've put this big flywheel on. This flywheel was kindly donated to me by my friend. Um, it came off his uh, boat. So with the piston changes, the compression ratio has now actually risen. So I'll try and turn this around. I'm going to try and keep the camera in focus while we're doing it. Sorry, I'm juggling uh, camera. I think I have to. So with the changes to the the piston uh, diaphragm support rings, um, the compression ratio has actually in, increased slightly. I'll just do that now. So I'm turning the flywheel with it, and we've seen almost. Zero point six bar on the pressure gauge. So that's uh, so that's one to one point six compression ratio. If you look at the um, piston, there is a little bit of instability in it. There's quite a bit of wobble this way. Um, it's kind of caused by me putting these rings on because it's, it's holding the compression, the, um, uh, the inflating diaphragms in a bit. It's sort of created a kind of a, an imbalance. Um, it obviously functions, but um, something will be looked at, I think, in the next design. Yeah, there you go. Solve one problem, cause another. <laughs> Welcome to engineering. Well, the big heavy flywheel is a bit more constant. 
than the last one, which is good. So that's a success. I've got this stove fan my father bought for me. I've put it there for the moment. It's not doing a great deal right there. Um, I'm wondering whether I can actually um, bolt it sideways down there so it blows air up, up through the, uh, the cold heat exchanger. So we're just coming to an end of the run now. Um, and the fire looks like that. So a lot of the air is actually bypassing the fire. I'm just going straight up the flute. So it's just running on warm air at the moment. My father's bought these um, these temperature gauges, the magnetic ones that you can stick on the side of the stove, just to give us a very rough idea of the temperatures. So, flu temperature of, it says 80 degrees. It might be. Might be after, I'll put my hand on it. Uh, yeah, it prob probably is 80, 80 degrees. So we got these three um, temperature gauges along the, the path of the, the cold side. So I'll just go along those a minute. The one, the one closest to the fire, which is our heat exchanger kind of area. Uh, 130, 130 degrees. Uh, the one midway along is about 70. And the one right at the end is currently at about 50 degrees. So there you go, a bit more of a su su successful run than last time. Um, I'm a little bit um, happier now than the last time. There's still obviously a few problems. The um, the pistons do seem to slap quite a lot. Um, after, 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 I have to have a think about that to see how we can improve the stability of the pistons. Um, but other than that, I'm fairly happy. Um, I'm almost, almost at the point now where I might actually get the... Um, uh, work out the power output of the thing because it must be given a little bit of power now um one thing to bear in mind as far as power output goes is this engine is it actually half the displacement of the previous engine which gave out about 200 watts so um so it'd be very interesting to see what this one will do right till next time see ya bye bye